Okay, so now we're ready to factor. And there are gonna be three ways that you can factor for me, and there's actually more than that. These are just the three that I like to show. Um, you can choose any one of these three, whichever one works for you. Um, I don't have any preference, but I wanted you to see all three so you could practice them and sort of like choose the one that actually does work best for you. Okay, so the first method is called the grouping method. And this is how most algebra textbooks deal with it. And essentially, the grouping method says we take the 4x squared and we write it down. We take these two numbers that we got that multiplied to negative 120 and added to negative 7, and we write those as coefficients of the x in either order. And then we take, sorry about that, your last term and write it down here. Now, the grouping refers to the fact that we're going to take the first two terms and group them together, and the last two terms and group them together. Now, you always put a plus in between here and put whatever the sign is of the term inside the parentheses with that. Now, we're going to pull any common factors out. So that first set of parentheses has no common factors between 4 and 15 other than 1, but between the x squared and the x, I could pull out an x. That would leave me with a 4x minus 15. In the second set of parentheses, the numbers 8 and 30 have a common factor of 2. So I'm going to pull the 2 out. And that would leave me with 4x minus 15. Now, in order for grouping to work, this and this have to look exactly the same. If they don't look exactly the same, you either have to check your math or you've chosen the wrong numbers. Now, what we're going to do is take this thing right here and this thing right here. Notice they both have a 4x minus 15 in them. So I'm going to pull that out in front like a common factor. And when I do that, what I'm left with from this first term is just the x that was sitting here. And from the second term, just this plus 2 that was sitting there. And so that is the factorization of that by the grouping method. Now, let me show you another method that's very similar. This is called the box method. Same first step, get two numbers that multiply to negative 120, add it to be negative 7. We find the numbers negative 15 and 8. But this time, instead of writing it in grouping, what we're going to do is put a box. And then the first term, the square term, goes in the upper left. The constant term goes in the bottom right. And then the negative 15 and the 8, the two numbers we came up with, go in the other two boxes in either order with an x next to them. Now, this is really just like the grouping method. It's just more visual. So I'm going to look at the first row, and I'm going to say, what's the common factor between 4x squared and negative 15x? Well, 4 and negative 15, common factor is just a 1. x squared and x, common factor is an x. So I'm going to write that common factor out in front of that row. And then it's sort of like filling in a Punnett square for in reverse. So if this is x and this was 4x squared, then what needs to meet there is what you would multiply x by to get 4x squared. And that would be a 4x. So if this is 4x and this is 8x, the thing that has to go here is a 2. If this is 2 and this is negative 30, the thing that goes up here is a negative 15. And then I can check this, it's negative 15 times x. So then your factors appear on the outside. So you can sort of think of this as the grouping method is like foiling in reverse, and the box method is like using the box to multiply in reverse. Now, the other method I'm going to show you is something called the magic factoring method. And not many teachers show this because it's kind of hard to explain why it works, but I'm going to give you a shot to explain. I'm going to show you why it works. So let me give you another slide. So we're going to do the same problem. 4x squared minus 7x minus 30. And again, we would find two numbers that multiply to give me negative 120, add to give me negative 7. And as we've said, the two numbers are negative 15 and positive 8. So that's the same steps no matter what method you're using. Grouping, box, or magic. You always have to multiply a times c, find two numbers that multiply to give you that, and add to give you the, the b. Now, the magic method. Here's how this works. 
we're actually going to take the two numbers that are sitting here, the negative 15 and the 8, and we're going to write x minus 15 and x plus 8. Now, if I were to stop right there, clearly that is not right. Because if I were to FOIL that out, there's no way I get 4x squared, and 8 times negative 15 is clearly not negative 30. So this is not the right answer. However, what we're going to do is we're going to take this a term, okay? And we are going to divide the two numbers that are sitting there by that number, okay? Now, the second part, you get x plus 2. Easy enough, right? But for the first part, 15 over 4, nothing simplifies there. So what I'm going to do is take that 4, anything that doesn't simplify when you do the fraction, and I'm going to move it there as a coefficient on that x. And you see, that's exactly the same answer we got before. Weird, huh? So I'm going to give you another problem so you can see how this works. And here's that problem. So again, we would start by multiplying a times c, 8 times 27. And I believe that gives you 216. So we want two numbers that multiply to give me 216 and add to give me 30. Now, when I look at 216, I immediately don't think of any numbers that go evenly into it. So I can just use the numbers I had as a and c to start. I know 8 goes into it evenly. That would go with 27, and that adds to 35. So that's not right. So we need this, the sum to be smaller. So essentially, when you need the sum to be smaller, we want to move the numbers closer together. So I'm going to try 9, because 2, 1, and 6 add up to be 9. We can divide the sum of the digits divided by 9. So if I divide 9 into that thing, I get, let's see, 24. 9 and 24 is 33. We're getting closer but we're not quite there yet. So let's try 12, because I'm pretty sure 12 will go into it evenly. Yep, 12 and 18. Oh look, there it is. So now here's a good grouping box. You would take those right to this coefficient next to the x, do your thing, magic method. I'm gonna take x plus 12, x plus 18. Then I'm going to take the 12 and the 18, divide them by the x squared coefficient. I'm going to simplify those fractions. And that would be 9 fourths. And then these numbers that are the denominators, I'm going to bring them up. like that. Now I'm going to do this by the box to check and make sure that was right. So let's see, my two numbers were 12 and 18. 8x and 12x squared, let's see, there's a 4 between the 8 and the 12, and an x between the x squared and the x. And if this is 4x and this is 8x squared, this has to be 2x. If this is 2x and this is 18x, this has to be 9. If this is 9 and this is 27, this has to be 3, and 3 and 4x meant 12x. So 4x plus 9, 2x plus 3. Huh. Interesting, isn't it? So I'm going to show you guys why the magic method works, but if you like this and you can get used to it, you can totally use it.